Uh, yeah. Hi. Hello, everyone. I always ask post-COVID that am I audible in every meeting. <laughs> so I, 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 I hope I'm audible. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, it feels nice and it feels quite a strange also for a creative person to start uh, this discussion uh, because it's actually programmatic is, is, is all media. Uh, and uh, when Anita said that, uh, can you speak uh, in a forum like this, I was like, yeah, it's, it's, in, it's good because I think now lines are blurring. I think it's time that uh, uh, across in uh, advertising, in communication, the lines should blur in terms of who does what and who knows what. Uh, it's important that a creative person knows how media functions, media people know how creatives function, and there has to be a good uh, uh, a, a marriage of the two because then only the, I think, tools will be effective. You can have programmatic uh, advertising is a great tool, but if you'll not have storytelling, which can actually support that, I think uh, it, it won't be as effective as it, it, it can be. Uh, so yeah, thanks a ton for uh, inviting me to this forum uh, on a subject I know little about, uh, but I've read a lot in the last few days, uh, so as to know what exactly it does. Uh, it, uh, it has also, uh, also enriched me in terms of uh, knowing about things I didn't know. Uh, that, that's been my actually journey in the last uh, one and a half years. I'd worked with uh, uh, the classic big agencies for almost two decades. I was with Ogilvy uh, for almost eight years. I was with Lentas for like seven, eight years. Uh, so I was with the classic traditional agencies for two decades and then I wanted to switch. And because I thought the world is switching, the world is changing. I think humans are changing, uh, human behavior are changing. Uh, people, uh, the human insights are changing. Uh, and that's when I thought it's time for me to switch, to uh, understand where the world is going and be a part of that world. And I think tools like programmatic advertising do that actually. They, they are actually uh, gauging and they are figuring out that the world is shifting, the audiences are shifting, the behavior is shifting, the way they consume media, the way they consume advertising content is shifting, it's changing and it's important to adapt and be more, uh, I would say, uh, more, more uh, contextual, more relevant, uh, because now we can be uh, with the way, obviously not just the tech digital revolution has happened across the world, but also how the consumers have, and the humans have lapped into it and they are changing their uh, behaviors as well. Uh, the little, uh, I think I would say the talk, I wouldn't call it a presentation, a little talk that I have uh, for what uh, today is just highlights about in the context of this changing uh, behavior uh, of consuming content where programmatic uh, advertising plays a big, big, big role in terms of it's a great tool. Uh, how do we uh, do storytelling? How do we create content? Uh, and how do we shift uh, gears a little so as to make the Storytelling also a little more uh, contextual, a little more personal, uh, a little more hyper-personal, rather right? say, hi a little more hyper-contextual, because in today's day and age, we can do that. It's possible to create content, uh, and it's possible to do storytelling, uh, which is more contextual. Uh, it's not the uber classic advertising which talks to the masses. I call it the shift from mass advertising to me advertising, you know, it's mass before, it's becoming more me. Because you can't talk to an individual at, at any given point of time because you know that what that person is doing, uh, you have enough data to, to kind of uh, uh, understand that, know that what that person is doing at what point of time. And you can, any brand can have a lot more relevant contextual conversations with, with the TGs. So that's roughly uh, a, a bit of, uh, so I'll start with uh, the, the green is for moving forward, right? Uh, and it'll help, tech help, sorry. Yes. The green is for? Forward green, big green. Okay. Small red. Right. Great, sorry. Yep, so that's our uh, media monk. So this is a little, a little about media monk, actually. We, 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 we've come like a, uh, just been a two, like three years over here. We are also becoming a part of this flux, this change. Uh, so I'll start with this, uh, what I call, uh, and I've been pretty excited about this, uh, this whole uh, conversation. I've been having it at internal forums as well as external forums about uh, how do we make content, how do we make uh, 
uh, advertising, how do you make communication more, uh, uh, more, more, more hyper-local, more hyper-contextual, more, more hyper-personal. And uh, so, and, and uh, let's start with why, like why, why, why there's a need. Uh, so if I actually have to look at like a hyper brief, because I think to me, uh, when I started my, my, my journey with advertising, brief was the first thing that I got introduced to. We get a brief from, the, uh, fr from our uh, planning uh, account management team, which comes from the client. And the briefs has always been classic, and still it's not changed. And until date, I think uh, the briefs come the same way. I think it's time, if you really need to change the way we tell our stories, the, if you want to make the, uh, the stories more hyper, contextual, hyper-personal, I think we'll have to make the briefs also a little uh, different. So uh, let's say, let's start with defining the TG. How do, do we define the TG when we look at a, uh, any classic uh, advertising brief, the mass TG, you know, the TG looks like this. Uh, roughly, I've taken one, one brief, you know, they say young adult, age 24, 29 years, first jobber, lives in a metro, ambitious, go-getter, loves having fun, maintains work-life balance, technology explorer, trendy, fashionable, and many more adjectives to define her or him. This is the classic definition of TG if, as a creative person, you get. Uh, uh, I get a very, very uber, very macro uh, kind of POV on that person, uh, but the world is changing. I think we can go a lot more closer. We can actually see that person a lot more closer. Uh, what we have started doing, actually, uh, at least at Media Monks, is we have changed the way we uh, write our briefs. We don't write briefs like this. We don't define our TGs like this. Uh, we've, we've started doing our briefs where the TGs are written slightly more personalized. The, they are hyper-personalized TGs. So it, the, that's how we approach, actually. Like, th th this was a brief for one of the uh, brands that we're working on. So our definition of TG is wakes up, checks FB while having his or her morning coffee, drinks double, short espresso, follows health, fitness influencers, posts sunny side up twice a week on FB stories, goes to gym, loves cardio, listens to uh, Martin Garrix, it's an EDM guy, uh, spends about an hour in gym, switches to Instagram, posts reels, uh, follows reels, on the way to offset, listen to podcasts, love stream, listening to life coaches, checks Insta and FB between breaks and office hours, on the way back, checks the dating apps, searches weekend, weekend destinations on Google, loves traveling, loves cycling and trekking, uh, watch, watches YouTube recipe on videos, loves culinary experiments for dinner, listen to podcasts and soulful music before going off to sleep. It's a journey in a person's day. And roughly, uh, you'll, you'll see a lot of us in, 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 in this. And you see the opportunities that you actually a brand has when you're mapping uh, a person's every day versus mapping a person's life. So what ha used to happen before and whenever we got the brief, the, the definition of the TG was so macro that we also always saw the person's life. I think the lives have changed now. The lives have become everyday. The behaviors are no, no more life behaviors. Behaviors change every day. Behaviors are becoming more and more micro in nature. Uh, they are changing every day. They're changing, changing every moment. I think it's important that we, we, we follow a brief like this if you really want to create content and stories, stories which are a lot more hyper-personal and hyper-contextual. Uh, uh, again, it, it can, you know, it gives you a lot of touch points. It gives you a lot of interaction points with the consumer where, where you can uh, uh, interact with, with, with that person, especially on, the, on forums like digital. Uh, now let's go to hyper-personalized insights, what they can be. Uh, again, like when, when, whenever we looked at insights, it were, they were always very uber because we were looking at a very uber uh, understanding of, 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 of TG. Uh, to me, I think uh, hyper-personalized insights are pure, it's the daily digital behavior. If you actually look at that, it's the mine of personalized contextual insights. If you actually look at that, and there's enough data that is actually available there, you can uh, get that. To me, the data is actually the new consumer insight. It's, it's not so much having a very uber understanding of a person, loves his family, loves his wife, is ambitious, wants to be some, something in five years, ten years. It's about what that person is doing every day, is what that person is doing every moment. I think if, if you actually 
do, uh, if, if we fetch that, we'll get a lot of insights. And insights need not be so uber and singular. Insights for the same person can be many. Throughout the day, a person lives many lives. Uh, when he's on, on a dating app, he's a different person. When he's on, a, uh, on, on an Instagram, that person is a different person. When that person is looking at Google, it's, it's a different person. So person is changing. Every, every, every site, every uh, app is changing the behavior of the person, is changing that person's approach towards life. That's how I think the, 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 that's the flux of a person's life. If you actually look at that, perhaps we'll get a lot more insights. Uh, we practice that, actually, uh, out there. Uh, I'll now come to, uh, I've kept it very crisp there because I think I have 30 minutes. Uh, now, these are things uh, which we have done, which we are doing right now. At, uh, so these are not, uh, uh, these are not uh, theories. These are practical experiments, practical things we have done, and we've achieved that in, in, on, on a few brands that we've got. Uh, so if we looked at the hyper-personal uh, TG, we looked at how do we approach hyper-personal insights, how do we create hyper-personal concepts or, or content or storytelling? How do we kind of uh, shift to that? Uh, one example, actually, uh, I can't, this is a brand called Axio. I can't reveal the film because that's going to go live in, in another few weeks or months. Uh, but I can tell you the, the, the how did we approach this. So we made a campaign. We made a classic uh, mass content, like a single TVC, right? We always make one single TVC, and the, it goes on television. And the biggest pr uh, problem that we have was that uh, the shelf life of that piece is actually is, is decreasing, is reducing. Like a shelf life of a television content is not, mo not more than a week, two weeks, max three weeks. If it's a big campaign, four weeks. Uh, how do we use that content and make it hyper-contextual, hyper-personal? Uh, it's a bank that gives credits. Uh, to uh, youngsters. Uh, so we looked at for what reasons youngsters look loan for. And there could be 15 different reasons, like one can take a loan for taking sabbatical, one can take small loans, I think. When I'm talking about loans, I'm talking about those small loans like Amazon Pay Later, uh, which are like worth 10,000, 15,000, et cetera, for which you don't have to have, you just have to have, to have a good Sybil score, you don't need any papers. Uh, one takes, uh, these guys, they take loan for random things. They take loan for buying a guitar. They take loan for buying a keyboard. They, took, they take a small loan for going for a sabbatical. They take a small loan for, uh, for buying a gaming device. Uh, for actually somebody has taken a loan for uh, actually enrolling for a gaming course. So the, the reason for taking loan is no more house, it's no more uh, cars, you know, people are taking loans for, again, it's a behavior change, it's a shift, the, everything is getting, I would say, micro, uh, you know, the, the world is getting more micro, the, re the, the loans are getting micro. So we thought, how do we make, so I'll tell you an example, what we did was, there was a story of one uh, young boy who's bought a ukulele, and his father asks him that, uh, why did you buy a ukulele? And that uh, son says that, hey, uh, because you know I love playing it. He's like, where did you get the money from? He said, I took a loan. I took credit. And the father is like, you took credit for buying a ukulele. You took a loan for buying a ukulele. The problem with your generation is you guys don't understand the value of money. How can you take credit for buying a ukulele? It's absurd. And that young guy says, no, Papa, I, I know the value of money. I know the value. When I play ukulele, my mother smiles. I know the value of a smile. When I pay, play ukulele, my friends come and they hear me. I know the value of friendship. And who knows, by playing ukulele, one day I'll become a big musician. And you'll be uh, proud of me. I know the value of that pride. So I know the value of money. That's the new tease, you know, you, that's the new the audience that we're talking to. So that's what one piece we created for television. What we did now, how do we make it hyper-contextual and hyper a lot of editing patterns you might have seen on digital, right? We take uh, where, they t uh, and mostly a political in nature, where you take some leaders and you play some lot of memes, which are video memes. You'll have somebody laughing. So these are very absurd edit patterns. So what we did was we kept the father in the film, the same from the TVC. 
Uh, for the other character, we chose a frontal camera, which is of a phone. And the f so the subject kept changing. So it was so the film now, which is hyper contextual was, which is actually uh, can be done in sh shoestring because you can take any anyone and shoot the front, uh, use the front camera and create the content. So the father says that why, uh, why did you buy uh, this? And the uh, person says that I had bought a uh, say a synthesizer or a keyboard. And he says, why did you buy a keyboard? Like, where did you get the money? He says, I, I took credit. So the dialogues of the kid changes. The dialogues of the father remain the same. So we took the, the video from the film from the father, but the, the, the kid kept changing, or that other protagonist kept changing, and we made close to 30 contextual films. Uh, so you took one piece of content uh, which is mass content, and you created 30 pieces of contextual content out of it with literally no money. I think that's the switch we need to have in terms of, because see, India, I think, is still is going to be a country of a lot of mass media. How do we use those assets and make them more contextual? There are ways and there are uh, designs, but one has to switch that. Uh, the need of actually going hyper, and strangely, I think they are, the client is more excited about the the hyper-contextual pieces more <laughs> than the, 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 the main TVC. Uh, because he's seeing the, the, the benefit of that. He's seeing that, yeah, I can be a more, lot more relevant because actually I can, uh, if some person is actually checking the prices of anything on, on, online, I can follow that person and I can send that particular video to that person. So my chances of conversion, of actually him or her taking a, uh, a credit from me is a lot higher because I'm having a relevant conversation with that person, which is what hyper-contextual, hyper-personal content can do. And again, I think that's where we would need programmatic advertising as a tool to uh, make it happen. But at the back side, I think it's important that the storytelling has to become that. The storytelling has to support uh, uh, tools like hyper, uh, tools like programmatic advertising. You have to create, uh, actually elsewhere in, in the world, in Media Monks, we have AI also doing it. So actually uh, AI is, uh, we have created algorithms, so which we actually, f you feed that and it reaches. Uh, I'm talking about India and what we have done. Uh, I'm not taking global examples because I think in India we are facing different problems. Uh, this was one very interesting way of going about it, of how do you make uh, something which is mass, a lot more hyper, uh, uh, personal hyper contextual. Uh, now, second one, uh, it doesn't use programmatic advertising, but it's a very interesting way of how do we go about making, creating content hyper-contextual, hyper-personal. Uh, it's one of my favorite brands, this Tara Tea. Uh, and it's a thing we did last year uh, in, in uh, Punjab. There's a festival called Lori. It's celebrated, and uh, what happens in that Lori is that you uh, actually sing a tappa. Tapa is a kind of song you sing uh, to celebrate anything new. So if in a house and a baby is born, you will sing a tapa for the baby. Uh, if, in a, if somebody has bought a new house, you will sing a tapa for celebrating the new house. If somebody has got into a new profession, you will sing a tapa for celebrating his new profession. Contexts are different. Uh, they are not same context. So there is one single lori. But there are different contexts that, that, that you celebrate it for and you sing these tapas for. Uh, so we thought that can we create, again, con content that is hy hyper-contextual and then also make it hyper-local because every lo uh, tapa starts with the name of the person. So if I have to sing a tapa and dedicate it to someone, I have to say, uh, say, Neeta, I know her name only. Neeta, Tonu, this Lori, the Vadi Vadi Vadaiya. And Ranu, like, you've got a new job, so here's a tapa for you. So how do we create a content? Because that, that festival needs hyper-personal, hyper-contextual content. How do we create that? We did a piece. Uh, obviously, the, over here, the medium was WhatsApp. We actually we, we had a microsite, and through microsite, we pushed through WhatsApp, which was, again, more personal as a, as, as a tool. But there's a case study. I think you, it'll make things clear. Uh, it'll play by pushing the same button. 
Lodi is Punjab's biggest festival, with Punjabis coming together around food, fire, and cha, and tappe. Folk songs sung by Punjabis to celebrate milestone occasions for their loved ones. So, to celebrate this big festival, we went all out. Shastriya Kalji, ki hal chala? Tata Tea Premium wallo tohanu lodi diya lakh lakh vadaiya. Presenting, vaddi khushiyan de tappe. A campaign that leveraged the cultural, personal and topical significance of tappe. Featuring Shehnaz Gill as our celebrity influencer. Daughter of Punjab who cuts across generations and genders in Punjabi families. With tailor-made, hyper-personalized tappe greetings. Sashri Kal Vibhasha, Sashri Kal Puneet, Sashri Kal Kukrejas, Sashri Kal Ankush. By creatively using the power of rephrase technology, we gave them a one-of-a-kind user-generated content experience which were customized based on occasion and name which we shared over WhatsApp. Helping us tug the hearts of Punjabis everywhere, bringing communities together over their love for celebrations and each other. Influencers came in and amplified the reach, making the celebrations even bigger. Our wishes reached 12.6 million plus people. 11.7 million Punjabis vibed, sang and danced to our tappe. 33,000 plus families participated to send out 11,000 plus greetings, giving us 99% positive sentiment. And lots of love on social media, letting us own Lodi and making us a part of Punjab's Vaddi Khushia. Uh, this was actually uh, uh, very, 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 it was interesting and it was actually that day the, it crashed, the microsite crashed because there were so many, uh, it was very easy, you have to just feed in the occasion and you have to feed in your name and uh, there'll be a personalized uh, tapa that goes, obviously we used uh, rephrase technology for this. Uh, but again, I think the conversation here is not about so much about this campaign, but my thing is about how do we make uh, our uh, storytelling a uh, lot more hyper-personal, a lot more hyper-contextual which is what it did actually. Uh, uh, for it's not just one, we took, I think, I think this is where we, we, we as, as a brand, Tara Tea had gone from mass to hyper-local because now we celebrate every state. So for uh, Punjab, there'll be a different campaign. For Delhi, there's a different campaign. For uh, uh, West Bengal, there's a different campaign. For uh, uh, UP, there's a different campaign. Over there, again, we'd use media because the media, media actually gives us the opportunity to, uh, to kind of distribute uh, content like that. Uh, after that, we thought that from hyper-local, we'll go hyper-personal now. And this was one of the first campaigns we did where we actually went from hyper-local to hyper-personal. And the journey uh, kind of going to continue. Uh, and over there, I think uh, I play a big role of uh, uh, program. Uh, pro it's, it's actually got quite problematic to say that word, prog prog programmatic. <laughs> it's been a tough one for me, programmatic advertising. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so how do we, I think it's, gonna, it's a great tool, uh, and I think it's important for, uh, for, the, for the storytellers, for the creative people, uh, for, uh, for people like me who spend, uh, say, 20 years doing uh, one ad film, and, we do, we, we, and have talked to crores of Indians. Uh, you know, that how do we unlearn that, or actually use that learning, rather, to talk to single individual? It's, it's, it's a huge journey because we've always talked to Karoods. Now we have to talk to a single person. Uh, and how do we do that? Keeping the same storytelling engagement alive. Because I think what has happens with uh, when you create hyper-personal content, especially using programmatic, it becomes a little transactional. Uh, you lose emotions, you lose, uh, you know, connect. I think it's, it's a big challenge uh, that we'll, we'll have to overcome, that how do we make that content a lot more engaging? How do you make lot, that more con that content lot? It still has some storytelling. It doesn't engages to sell a product only, but it engages uh, with the audiences so as to connect. I think it should be at connection and not so much at selling. Uh, so that's my last. Uh, this is what I I I am shifting to. I think I'm call, I call it like the industry has to shift from mass communication to me communication. It's not mass anymore, it's going to be more me. It, it has to talk to an individual. And this is what uh, I think programmatic does, advertising does. I think this is what a lot of industry leaders, especially creative leaders, have to figure out 
how do we use that tool effectively? How do we put a storytelling in that tool? How do we make the tool more engaging? Because if it will not happen, it will become too transactional. So I think it's a big challenge for us, storytellers, the creative people. And uh, I, I just, I'm happy that we are taking some baby steps. These are baby steps towards it. It's a, it's a long journey uh, to kind of uh, cover. So yeah, that's, I think that I've done before. Um, I, I, I talk fast, so I've finished faster, perhaps. Uh, yeah, so that's, thanks, Tanzu.